Martha Mims is that guy everyone just forgets to talk about, I think. Um, I know I've forgotten to talk about him. He's in my fourth tier at wide receiver, which is a really interesting tier this year because it's a very deep class, very interesting class, very good class, you might say. Um, and yeah, Marvin Mims does well. He does well in production models. He fits in very neatly with the top of this class in some ways, actually. Uh, and I don't think I like him that much. Let me quantify that by saying that I like Marvin Mims fine. Like I say, I have him ranked in a really interesting tier with other players I like a lot. But... The nature of wide receiver and rookie drafts is I tend to try and tap out early. There are four or five wide receivers that I really like in this class, and a couple that I like taking shots on with third and fourth round picks after my running backs and tight ends that I want to take shots on disappear. But Marvin Mims is probably going to outproduce my expectation and probably going to not make a lot of my teams just because he's not the type of wide receiver I target. And um, He played in the same team as Marcus Brown and CeeDee Lamb, which actually gives us a really interesting look of how he compares to those players playing in a similar role. He's playing with an ADOT way over 17 um, on average. Actually, he's played a 15 ADOT, a 17 ADOT, and then a 17 ADOT his last year. Now, CD Lamb and Marcus Brown were both averaging around a 13, 12 to 14 ADOT. So Marvin Mims is working even further down the field with a similar slot rate um, in his first and final year of around 34%. In that second year, interestingly, the first time he sees a significant volume jump over 15 rounds per game. And um, the first time he had that, yeah, his rookie year is running uh, 13 rounds per game. And then he goes up over 20 and 30 rounds per game in his final year. So interesting enough, his best stats come when he's receiving only 13 rounds per game, which means that's essentially discounted by my model because that's not enough rounds to really judge that yards per round run or is receiving yards per team pass attempt, which still remains relatively stable, which is actually one of the benefits of uh, receiving yards per team pass attempt. And his overall role just looks so ingrained in his profile that this was a guy who worked best further down the field his rookie year. They tried to give him more volume, more slot role the second year, and he didn't really increase his overall possession of the offense, but he did do a fairly good job. And then his final year, for that final year before he's declaring for the NFL draft, they move him back to the outside. He does take on a much larger role um, for the overall team volume, but his yards per out run don't escalate particularly well they go for 2.6 to 2.7 it looks like he did very well he's a very good college player on a very good college team and he's going to get some draft capital i would imagine especially considering the lack of players with that outside role in this class he does also come in on the lighter side at 183 pounds and they, they're giving him a somewhat mediocre weighted adjusted speed score but you probably know by now i don't care too much about that it's one of the ways of seeking value look for a good player who doesn't hit combine highlights and Sometimes your league mates are going to undervalue that. But I think the NFL is actually primarily going to read into his team and the fact that he can work outside the numbers and did that fairly effectively and give him some draft capital. And I just don't see a great deal of fantasy upside, but I do think he could produce top 24 seasons in the right spot with enough draft capital. So all in all, he's a receiver who caught 123 receptions for 2,398 receiving yards in Oklahoma in the Big 12. He should get some draft capital. He works well outside the numbers. He's going to have some plays in the NFL and in the right landing spot could definitely produce top 24 wide receiver seasons and he just doesn't have that wow factor for me um but in the second round i'm already starting to think heavily about any wide receiver i think is falling because they're being discounted because of draft capital and size um i'm running back and tight end or quarterback even in one qb and i just think he's going to fall out a lot of my rosters you should probably reconsider that um but i can just feel i'm not going to end up with a lot of marvin mims because it's not the type of profile that excites me but it's definitely a really good profile Anyway, if you're interested in yourself, you can check out the database pinned to my Twitter timeline, pinned to my Patreon. Uh, it's in the Linktree link. It's a Google Sheet. You can download it, take a look yourself. Let me know what you think. And um, thanks very much for checking out the video.